Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Craig Burrell, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Corporal Jeanette McNeely. We warmly welcome Mr. Robert Semple, Medal of the Order of Australia, British Empire Medal, mentioned in dispatches, and Rat of Tobruk, veteran of El Alamein and New Guinea. We also welcome representatives from the Australian College of Nursing. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria, and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by visitors and students on behalf of the following schools. From New South Wales, Central Coast Grammar School, Primary Department, and Corindi Public School. From Tasmania, John Paul II Primary School. And from Victoria, Ringwood North Primary School. Please stand and join in singing the national anthem. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved. And here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest, Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the pool of reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to staff nurse Amy Vader O'Grady. Amy O'Grady was born in 1877 in Castlemaine, Victoria, the daughter of Daniel and Ellen O'Grady. Little is known of her early life. She undertook nursing training at Melbourne Hospital at the turn of the century and worked at various hospitals over a period of 13 years, including in London, where she trained to be a midwife before enlisting in the Australian Army Nursing Service in August 1915. She listed her next of kin as her elder brother, Father James Henry O'Grady of the Roman Catholic Presbytery in Preston, Victoria, and her address simply as North Carlton. More than 3,000 Australian civilian nurses volunteered for active service during the First World War. They were posted to Britain, France, Belgium, the Mediterranean, India and the Middle East, where they worked in hospitals, on hospital ships and trains, or in casualty clearing stations closer to the front line. O'Grady embarked for overseas service from Melbourne on the 24th of August 1915. She was posted to number one Australian General Hospital at Heliopolis in Egypt, where her patients were men who had been wounded or became ill while fighting on Gallipoli. In March 1916, O'Grady transferred to the Cholbra Military Infectious Hospital in Egypt. She spent four months nursing there before volunteering to go to India. With 49 other nurses, she sailed to Bombay on the HS Neutralia, one of the first contingent of Australian nurses sent to India at the request of the Indian colonial government after an outbreak of cholera earlier in the year. In Bombay, she worked at the General Freeman Thomas Hospital, where the patients included hundreds of Turkish prisoners of war and wounded British troops. The nurses found the tropical monsoonal climate debilitating, and shortly after arriving in Bombay, Nurse O'Grady became ill. She died of cholera at Calaba War Hospital on the 12th of August, 1916. She was 39 years old. Staff nurse Amy O'Grady was buried at the Suri Cemetery in Bombay. Her brother James organised a requiem mass at his church to pay tribute to his sister. Staff nurse O'Grady's name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right, amongst more than 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember staff nurse Amy Vader O'Grady, who gave her life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the oath and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many men lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over, but in Australia they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. Please feel free to visit the poppy display in the grounds as you leave. We thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and we wish you all a very good evening.